Okay, let's start with running in place. Punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. Keep your weight forward. So your back heel <clears throat> is off the floor. You don't want to lean forward, that offers your face, but you want your weight forward so that you can move easily. And now we're gonna shuffle in the box. Keep your hands up, side, back, side, front, and then go the other way. Knees. Make sure that the, you keep the standing leg bent. Other side. steps and if you forgot to start your watch like I did start it now kicks front side back Okay, so that was six exercises. Run in place, punches, shuffle, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. 30 seconds each, two more times through, and then after you do it, come back and stretch. Okay, so once you've done your three sets times, three times through, reach up, reach over to one side. Other side. And straight up to the front. Reach for the floor. Keep your chin up. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch, both heels are on the floor. If you want more stretch, put this elbow inside your knee and push the knee open. Turn, stretch your hip flexor, make sure that your ankle is out past your knee, not tucked in here like this. Straighten up your legs. All my toes are facing in the same direction. My chin is up, my back is flat. I reach my chest toward my front knee. That stretches this hamstring. Also stretches this calf a little bit. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees out. Other side, grab your ankle. Make sure your chin is up. Down in the side stretch. And 
turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Toes all in that direction, chin up, back flat, chest to your knees, stretch your hamstring. And then have a seat. One foot out in front of you, pull the other foot across the knee. Okay, if you can tuck this foot and still keep your whole butt on the floor, do it. If you can't, if you have one side of your one hip up when you do that, keep the leg extended. <clears throat> Whichever knee is up, take the opposite elbow, put it outside the knee, and push the knee across. <clears throat> Other side. Okay, feet out. Make sure your chin is up and your toes are pointed up. If you roll your toes in, you're not getting much of a stretch. So chin is up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Getting closer, spill elbows to the floor, and bring your feet together and reach your hands as far out as they'll go. You don't want your toes pointed. Toes should be pulled back, chin should be up. So you're not here, but you're here. Pull your feet in, heels are on the floor, rock back and forth. Then put your hands on the floor and straighten out your legs. Okay, so we're going to start with squat lunge. When you do a lunge, you want to make sure, I generally step back when I do a lunge, you can step forward if you want to, but I find it's easier to get myself in the proper position for this knee if I step back. You want your knee over your ankle. If you have your knee out here and your ankle tucked behind it, that puts a lot of stress on your knee. So you want to step back here far enough that this is straight up and down. So when you do, I'm going to go squat, lunge. Squat, lunge, squat, lunge, squat, lunge. Okay, then I'm going to have a seat. And I'm going to put my hands way up here, not back here behind my hips, but way up here in front of my hips, out far enough that they're not bumping into my body. Then I put my feet flat on the floor and lift my butt up in the air so my back is in tabletop. This is called tabletop. You're going to keep your feet where they are. You're not going to let your butt touch the floor. You're going to pull back to an L sit. So forward, lift your hips and push them back. And the last one is called a sit out. Put yourself here, hands and feet are on the floor. It's not a plank like you would do a push up. My butt's way in the air. So I can pick one hand up, touch the opposite foot. The foot that I'm touching is going to shoot through the hole that I made when I picked my hand up. Then I bring it back and I go the other way. So we did squat lunge, we did tabletop to L-sit, and we did sit-outs. We did 30 seconds of each one, 
I want you to do one more set, 30 more seconds of each one. Okay, so this whole month we've been talking about, about power. First week we talked about power through rotation. Second week we talked about power through backup mass. Third week we're talking about power through anchoring. And honestly, they're all tied together. The first drill that we're gonna do, you're gonna start in Sotomayor Chassis. So facing diagonally, toes out, horse punch, and you're gonna be rotating into a jingle chassis or front stance. Okay, so you're going to rotation, that's rotation. Yeah, it is rotation, but it's anchoring. Okay, so the anchoring that we're talking about now is using the ground to push off. So I start here in my toes out horse stance and I rotate. Ideally, I'm rotating on the heel of the back foot. So there's my rotation. As I come forward, my backup mass is pushing forward here. We talked about that last week and I'm pushing off my back foot. That's where my anchor is. So I'm anchored to the floor. So they all happen together, rotation, backup mass, and push. Okay, so we're gonna start here in the Sogro Chassis, the horse stance, and we're gonna rotate and punch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to do the same thing with, you know, we call it a headlock in the forms, but what I prefer to think of it as is coming up under someone's chin with your forearm. Okay? If you're doing this tongue sudo, you're chambering here. If you're Kempo, you're changing, chambering here. You don't have time for this distance because the target's closer. So I'll do it both ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then same thing on the other side. I want, I want you to focus on is that you are rotating the back foot, rotating your hips. So the rotation comes from your foot through your knee, through your hips, and then pushes your hips forward. So there's your backup mass, and you're pushing off the back foot. There's your anchor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then the other way that we talk about anchoring is anchoring your target. So here, this, this, you can be putting your target up against something, okay? So you can stand somebody up against the wall or against the car, and that holds them. So you hit them with a front kick, and they can't go anywhere, so they're anchored to the wall. That one's a really hard one to practice if you don't have big pads. Um, and even if you do have big pads, if you don't tuck your chin, you get your head slammed into the wall behind you. But we also practice, okay, so if I do, say, a crescent kick, I'm holding, I'm anchoring their head here and hitting it. Or I am anchoring their head here and hitting it with an elbow. Or I could be anchoring their head here and hitting it with a knee. Okay, so let's do both, all of those. One, two. Okay, I'm rotating. I'm dropping my weight into it and I'm anchoring their head with my hand. Three, four, five. And then the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then we're gonna practice. You're holding your head and you're dropping your elbow into it. Now what I'm seeing particularly from the kids doing action karate form seven, is this. Because you're thinking you have to drop your weight. But the problem with dropping your weight that way is you've dropped your head, and now you're offering your head as a target to be anchored by their hands and hit with their knee. So you're gonna drop your weight drops straight down here, not this way. So I'm gonna grab the head, rotate, drop my knee, head is anchored here. One, two, three, four, five, and then on the other side, one, 
two, three, four, five. Okay, then I'm going to grab the side of their neck and their shoulder and pull them in. So I'm holding on to them and pulling them into my knee. The rotation is here. The backup mass is as I set my weight as I strike. And the anchoring is where I'm holding on to them. One, two, three, four, five. And other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then what I'd like you to do is find somebody who can hold for you. If you have focus pads at home, that's great. Otherwise, have them hold a small pillow for you. Um, and I want you to rotate and well, I want, what I want them to do is hold the pad out and I want you to just punch. Then I want you to add the rotation, the backup mass, and the anchoring to the punch and feel the difference. Then I want them to hold the target out and you're gonna grab it with your hand. So you're gonna put your hand behind theirs and hit with the kick or the elbow. So you feel where the anchoring is coming from. Okay, three action karate forms. Um, each move. You need to say one of the places the rotation is coming from. So we start here, okay? Um, I'm actually anchoring here. I mean, one, three, one place where power is coming from. So I'm anchoring here, I'm pushing off my back leg. I'm rotating. Um, I'm gonna rotate again, and then push back up mass, push, rotate, back up mass, drop, turn. I'm anchoring here. Okay, I'm pushing off my hands as I throw the side kick. Rotation, rotation, and then here I'm pushing off the back knee. So back up mass and anchoring. And then action karate form seven. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one with you. We're gonna do it really slow. I am not gonna say where the words are, but we're gonna go slow enough so that on each one, you need to be thinking about where the power comes from. They say the words out loud. I'm not saying them out loud because I want you to be thinking about them. And if I say them, then you're not going to do it. You're just going to use my words. Okay, this is the place that we were talking about the elbow. I want this, not that. Two roundhouse kicks here. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with action karate form 10. We're gonna go slow. I want you to say where the power is coming from, not just repeat what I'm saying. And there's a ton of spin kicks in this form. It's really easy to say rotation, 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 but I want you to think a little bit more about some other ways you might be generating power in this form.
Okay, then next week is strike test. So what you should really do, especially if you are red, brown, or red, black, but you should really all do this, is do all your forms. Action karate form one, right up through black belt form. And every one of them, think about where you're generating your power from. Okay, four chucks. We're gonna do the single chuck form, and then when we do the double one, we're gonna add a couple of just little cool things that we've been practicing in class the last few weeks. So single chuck. And then get your other one, unless you're a beginner. If you're a beginner, you're still doing just one. The rest of you guys are doing two. Okay, gut sword form. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and set. Okay, if you're like, I don't remember the next move. Okay, this is the last week before strike test. Go back to the last couple videos where it's all broken down. What you should really be doing this week is doing all your forms over and over and over again so they're ready for strike test. You should know them by now. 